Star Trek The Next Generation gave us a sampling of a lot of ships. And of those ships, we see the Federation's Nebula-class light frigate. Ooh, the Galaxy class got a new move. Join me inside as we print that today. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, we were we are looking at Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager's Nebula class starship. The one with the, basically looks like the Galaxy class with the warp nacelles flipped over and a big old pod on the top. Yeah, we're taking a look at that ship today and we're gonna do it our usual way. We're not gonna go small, we're gonna go big. And I have found a model on a Thingiverse that just does this justice. The model maker did a fantastic job. We'll hop to that here shortly, but all in all, we want to take a look at and build the ship, print the ship out in a good way that it makes a good model. And that's what we're going to do today. So if you're interested in content like that, subscribe button, please join the crew as we do all kinds of stuff, talk about 3D printing, get into models, all kinds of that fun stuff. So make sure you subscribe and join us as we continue to move forward. And also, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, helps us get out there, helps more people see it, helps this channel grow, and I really do appreciate it. And any questions, comments, leave them. So, let's move forward, let's hop over to that computer and let's get this Nebula class starship sliced. We'll get it, we'll go find it on Thingiverse, we'll slice it, we'll print it, and then we'll come back here and take a look at the final product. Okay guys, so as I was saying, we were talking about the Nebula class light cruiser for the Federation fleet. Same time as the Enterprise D, we saw this ship all the way through Deep Space Nine, we saw it in Voyager, I mean we even saw the silhouette of her in the season two of Star Trek Picard. This ship has been introduced into service, produced, and has longevity a long term with our older friends the mirandas the excelsiors this ship is kind of taking over some of that workload from the excelsior even though it's not considered a heavy cruiser but even in the first episode where we saw this kind of variant with the phoenix it carries a complete heavy arsenal and we're looking at the standard class not the phoenix variant so here we have thingiverse and with that Looking at Thingiverse, we have to make sure we look at what is going on with this ship. And I have looked at a lot of files through Thingiverse, Yegi.com, even Cults 3D didn't even have very many, but I looked through a lot of files. And when I pull these, they either lack detail, like the lifeboats and the windows, all that stuff ain't there. Or it has air, it just is incomplete. There's manifold errors, parts don't render out in Cura, and you got to do a lot of fixing to get one of these to work. Well, the one I'm going to show you today, you don't. Just flat out, you don't. It's a great build, it works really well, and we're going to get an even more detailed look than usual at this build. So here's just some of the files, and this is kind of what I'm talking about, especially if we look down. Oh, wait, I don't have that open up fully. There we go. At like this one, there's no lifeboats, it's just a saucer. There's very little detail to the model. And that's not what we want. We want really good detail. So this is the one we're printing from Outcast RC. It is a really great file. It is one complete ship. I print it as one complete print. There's not parts here, guys. This is one print. It makes painting a bit more difficult, but we get away with one print, we get a great print, and we get a lot of detail. There is some detail cleanup I need to do on mine, but I also blew it up 300%. So we gotta keep that in mind as we do this. So here's the model. Tip and trick here, if you wanna download it as a zip file, after the number, slash zip, especially if it has multiple parts, that download all button doesn't work half the time. Type zip. Down here in my lower left corner is my download of a zip folder with all the files. So let's hop over to Kira. Let's just get this guy sliced up and let's get it over to the printer. All right, guys, so we've got the file in Kira. This is my CR10 V2 build plate setup. And I have increased the model size to 300%. So with that, you can see it is a very large print because this is a very nice size build plate 310 by 310 by two by 350 i believe is the measurements so you can just see the sharp detail of this model it is fantastic the lifeboats the bridge 
I'm really anxious to put this one in the resin, but we got to wait on that until we get the printer set up. And unfortunately, I have a vacation in the way. I'm not going to pour resin in that printer till I get back. But you can just see the detail. Now, you see these pillars. Those are custom supports. I use a plugin from the marketplace called Custom Support. And you can grab it right here and you can pop them on in areas that you're concerned about. And you can see, like here at the warp nacelle, I use them to create a cradle so that the bottoms of the warp nacelles could build up. Um, cause a lot of times what will happen with Federation starships brrr, are they, uh, the warp nacelles are always the problem. They never get a good hole and then they never build up. So doing this cradling method, how you can see how I put the supports around it to make sure it can't wiggle when it's being built, when it's getting started, that way it gets a good foundation and can build up to actually join the support and the rest of the model. I also supported the impulse engines because they are kind of a weird divot. And I put some support around so that this has more contact with the build plate as it builds up. So, and then you can see the red, that's where the standard supports are gonna plug in, the auto-generated, which I'm running this at about 70%. But you can see it builds up really, really well. And also I wanted these a little further out like this as well, just to give more contact with the build plate because I'm going narrow and I'm going tall. So that allows for me to print that, build that in, and actually keep that secure on the build plate. As you can see, four days, my current settings is going to take 655 grams of PLA. So just a bit over a half a spool to build this guy. And we could probably honestly get away with lowering the infill from five to like two, because this is a really, really strong model, but there's also a lot of support going in here and that eats up filament as well. And you guys may say I'm over supporting it and we'll take a look here. I def definitely want to ensure I'm getting good support, but we've got the warp pylons. We've got some additional support building up for the impulse drive. We're getting good support balance for the uh, weapons pod and sensor pods, and also for the arm itself to build. So in all honesty, I don't feel like I'm over supporting. Uh, honestly, a little bit, I feel like I'm under supporting. I feel like I should come out more on the saucer, but um, I've already done it with this configuration and it worked out well. So I'm using my CR10 custom profile at 0.15. Um, speeds are pretty much standard for CR10. Inland PLA plus um, gray is the filament that I used. Um, I love this filament. It works great. The Inland PLA plus, it just works really well. And I really enjoy using the filament. So, And I have a micro center right here in the city that I live. So it's readily, easily supplyable. And a spool is anywhere from $16.99 to $18.99. It's relatively cheap to use this material. It's good material. It has good strong, good shine, good buildup. And you guys will see it here in a little while in the finished product. So uh, my print temperatures for Inland PLA, I tend to print at 215. Works really well. Not a lot of barely any stringing most of the time and it just prints clean now i'm using the glass plate of the cr10 v2 and i actually take my bed temperature down to 50 and it works really well for the room that i have it's in my basement it's unfinished but the room doesn't get cold so it works really well for me at those temperatures um speeds pretty standard stuff um i do have an retraction enabled my retraction is 6.5 to help prevent stringing and uh, I do have Z-Hop when retracted. Also, my cooling is pretty much straight standard. My support overhang angle for standard supporting is 70. So we're not using a lot, but we're not using a whole bunch. The lower the percentage, the more support. So keep that in mind. And I am using a raft for this one to give it a little bit more connection to the build plate. And I'm doing that at a five millimeter raft. So all in all, pretty straightforward and simple. You can see this is how the printer is actually going to print it. And the 5% infill was probably too much, but you do some, you learn, you remake your file and you do it again for the next one you got to print. So let's hop over to the printer. Let's get this printer. Remember, if you're enjoying or finding any of this content useful, make sure you hit the subscribe buttons. And if you feel like I left something out or have a question, make sure you leave a comment down below for me so I can check that out. So let's get this printed and I'll see you guys on the other side.
Okay guys, so like I said, here's the final product. And I think this came out beautifully. You can see the lifeboats, the detail. This is even just kind of up a bit more. So what you just saw in the final product, the ship came out fantastic. And you can see, I mean, it is, well, it's, it's big. Here's a quarter. So <laughs> it came out great detail, almost completely ready to paint once I popped all the supports off. I got a little cleanup I want to do back here on this section. And a little bit here I want to clean up with the warp nacelles. Popped away very nicely. And the ship just came out really, really well. I'm really pleased with this one. So as kind of just the final wrap up, the only thing that I have a little bit of a problem with is this line. In all honesty, I'm not going to do a thing with it. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of resin and talc and paint that in here, probably in the stream to kind of raise that. And up here, I may just sound it down in a few areas. And then with the windows, you know, they're not overly, they're there, but they're not overly pronounced, which is fine. But I may take a soldering iron and come back and make them a little bit more pronounced before I try to prime and paint this. But all in all, gorgeous print. This model is fantastic. If you're looking to make your minis or anything along that line, make sure you're taking a look at this model to fit out your Nebula class Starship fleet because my goodness, the detail is fantastic. So once I get the frozen Mega 8K, all up and running and I get back from vacation, I intend on doing that same print on the Mega 8K. But let's head over and let's wrap this video up. Thanks guys. All right guys, beautiful ship, beautiful print. There was a little defect in mine, but it's not the model, it was the printer. But hey, we got a successful print out of it and that's all that matters. And sometimes these Star Trek ships can be a doozy to print. So we got it and that's awesomeness. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, make sure you sub. Um, if you have questions or want to see a, feder a certain Federation ship printed, comments, let me know. And we'll continue looking forward because I had a blast printing this one. I love this ship. It's been in so many of the shows. I think it's even in Star Trek Picard, but a little fancied up. So awesome one. The ship's in a lot of places, all over the place, Dominion War, all the places. So hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next video.